Well, welcome to the, the Old Classic Car YouTube channel. Now, in this video, I thought I'd share just a couple of thoughts on safety and workshop safety when it comes to working on, tinkering with, and driving older cars. Now, you can go online, you can look in the magazines, and the, there are any number of articles out there telling you how to use a welder, angle grinders, hammers, drills, saws, um, fire issues, and so on. Um, but hopefully, this video will bring attention to a couple of aspects of safety when it comes to old cars that I have not seen mentioned before anywhere. So uh, please stick around, it'll only be a very brief video, but it might just come in handy and uh, be useful to one or two people out there. Thank you. Right, well, the first near disaster that I'd like to relate um, occurred on Saturday morning. And I took Little Dodge out for a spin into town. I got about three miles down the road, then there was an almighty bang, cloud of steam, and uh, it was a, a fail to proceed moment. Um, and obviously something had gone pretty terminal with the cooling system. When I actually had a look under the bonnet, I noticed something missing from the fan assembly. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out that there used to be four blades on there, but now there are only three. And one of them had come off and gone through the radiator, which was not great news. Now. When I had a closer look, someone had actually bodged it up around here, so I can only assume that maybe they'd started splitting or there'd been a stress fracture or something going on. But the net result was that they bodged it up and I hadn't spotted this and it went through the radiator. Now that was bad news, but I was able to get the radiator repaired. What would have been much worse news was the fact that a few minutes earlier I'd had the engine running on the driveway with the bonnet up and my head under the bonnet just looking for any leaks, that kind of thing, with the engine running and they're spinning away at whatever RPM they, they run at. So that could have been a great deal worse. So I would urge anyone with a fixed uh, fan assembly like this just to go and check the blades and just make sure there are no stress cracks developing, um, especially with some of the earlier ones where they bolt on. If they've been over tightened at some point in the past, that can lead to fractures. So I'd recommend just keep an eye on your fan assembly. Right, now this is the, the more alarming of the two incidents that I was going to talk about in this video. Um, and the title of this one is, of course, about fingertip removal. Now, you'd probably think that that relates to the uh, fan assembly which uh, came apart, but no, that didn't touch my fingers at all. Um, what actually happened relates to this little scrap of material which was one of my son's old school jumpers. Now, this managed to take off the corner of my little winky finger there um, and I'll explain how that happened right now. Now the second tale of woe involves this Ford truck which I've been working on and off for the last seven or eight years. Uh, it runs but it's not on the road but it's nearly there. Uh, so one day I decided to give it an oil change, fairly simple stuff. Once I'd done that, I put it out on the drive and I just left it running just to see and make sure there were no leaks, anything like that. Um, I had a quick peer underneath and that's when the problems began. Because I noticed there was a few spots of old oil on the bottom of the sump, so I thought I'll just give it a quick wipe. So I grabbed the nearest cloth, which is this one, which was my lad's old school jumper, but he had outgrown it by that time, fortunately. Um, and I just proceeded to give it a quick, quick wipe around. Now, the problem is, rear of the sump where the gearbox joins the engine there's an inspection hole where the flywheel and the starter ring gear can be seen and you use that for setting the timing that kind of thing uh, and that was obviously whizzing around while the engine was running now i was over here thinking oh, i'll be okay i'm well out of the way of this here um, but sadly that wasn't the case because the jumper which i was using like this had other ideas and even though this was dangling down the other end of the pulley it decided in an instant to suck itself into the, the aperture up there, presumably caused by the rotating flywheel. Um, and this happened in the blink of an eye, obviously. And the cloth went whoop like this and wrapped itself around the, the, the uh, flywheel. Now the problem was, I was still hanging on to this cloth for a moment. And my hand followed it, and my finger, the little finger, went straight into the, the aperture where the flywheel was. And it caught itself between the ring gear and the edge of the bell housing, uh, which obviously did, did smart a little bit, but um, yes, 
Unfortunately, the engine stopped and I was able to withdraw my hand and see, see what was left on my finger. And it did take the corner of it off, which was a little depressing. Um, but yes, anyway, I was able to tape it up and carry on. Now, the cloth had wrapped itself all the way around the flywheel, so it took about two hours with a large screwdriver edging the engine back fractionally at a time just to pull out the remains of this cloth. Um, and obviously it was a bit of a downer losing the corner of my finger at the time. Um, but fortunately at least the engine was okay. Um, now obviously this wasn't a great thing to happen and I never expected it to happen either but um, sometimes you know you just can't plan for everything. So what with the fan blade coming off on the Dodge's uh, engine and this little incident with this particular cloth um, I'm very wary now about being around any engine that's running, uh, whether it's at a show or back here in the garage. So uh, anyway, those are the two incidents I wanted to talk about and uh, hopefully you've found that of interest and uh, please tune in again and we'll see what other videos we can come up with.